Okay, looks like all systems are go. Great. Nice to see you. How are you? Nice How are things? You. I'm fine. Great. <laughs> Thank you. How are you? I'm good. So let's um, today. I'm we, still enormous on my screen. I just feel I should tell you. You, you, you look great, though. I think the enormity okay. of the situation is, uh, has certain gravitas to it. So, so <laughs> I approve of the enormity of the situation. Um, okay, fair enough. So running straight away into uh, our what are what we're hoping to do today is um, oh, as uh, we're going to do something if, if the switching would work. Unfortunately, that's not working properly. Okay, so we have a, a setup today where we're going to um, play a little game similar to something that you and I did long time ago uh, where we put ourselves under enormous pressure to have a, a, a very short couple sentence long sort of elevator pitch. And um, I need to make sure I've got something to write on. I noticed that, uh, that they're not there. So let me grab this and some pens and other gubbins. Um, so let me just read a little, we're also going to try to use the character archetype stuff that we did once. So it's oh, an yeah. awful lot to think about in one go, but that's part of the fun is doing a little bit of mental overload and seeing what happens. So the, what I wanted to do was, um, I wanted to sort of set up the scene, uh, with uh, a little game called the Gansamacher Agency. So let me just read this little preamble out. So it says, if you want to make it in Hollywood, you've got to have top representation. But until then, everyone's got to start somewhere. The Gansamacher Agency has launched the careers of many, many well-known stars. The trouble is it can't seem to hold on to them. As soon as they're famous, they head to bigger and better agencies. However, this hasn't stopped Irving Gansamacher from trying to get them back long after they've hit the big time. And to that end, he lunches talent throughout the week and pitches them new projects. The problem is he never knows who he's going to meet and what he's going to pitch until the day of the meeting. And that's where you come in. So you are his overworked and underpaid writer's room. And when he calls you, he'll tell you the star he's having lunch with. And then it's a 30 minute drive from his office to Spago's. And that gives you 30 minutes to come up with the story pitch that focuses on character. Now, not only does the pitch need to include the actor in question, this will be the star, but you'll need to pick a co-star that Gansamacher is also trying to woo. The project will need to feature the star's favorite charity or cause in some way, as well as a set piece that needs to be recycled from another failed script project that's in turnaround. And finally, there are certain product placement <laughs> promotional partners that Gansamacher is trying to keep sweet. Okay, you got it? So okay, yep. <laughs> here's what we need. Seven cards. We need the star, mm -hmm. the co-star, the genre, the cause, the set piece, and the promotion, and then a premise to sort of pull it all together. Okay. Whew. All right, so in the first step, which we're going to give ourselves five minutes, it's basically to answer the question, who's in it? So we're going to draw a star and a co-star. Yep and a genre. And then we're going to go to our wonderful character wheel, which I remember you drew so fantastically. I have a little scan of it. We're going to oh, go to well our done. character wheel and try to figure out what archetype to use for these, the star and co-star. All right. So let's give ourselves five minutes and see okay. how it goes. So here comes the first member. This is okay. the star. So we're going to, I'm okay. shuffling the talent cards here. I don't know what it's going to okay. be. Our star is Reese Witherspoon. All right, so let's just remind great. ourselves. We should, everyone great. should know who she is, but we'll remind ourselves like uh, what she's been in lately. Oh, I thought I was doing that in IMDb. I did it in the wrong place. Nope. Right. So Reese, Reese Witherspoon. Wither the Wither spoon. Spawn. Sorry. <laughs> Wither the spoon. Wither the spoon. Okay, so. Mm. I didn't see Wild, sadly, but yes, okay, Legally Blonde, well known for all those pictures. Let's see. A White Lie, Legally Blonde 3. Oh, they're doing does that another mean a, one. Does that mean like where's the spoon or a spoon that is withered? Or wither be the spoon. I think you're right. I think it's where where has it gone? Mm. Where has the spoon gone? So does she come from a noted family of pickpockets? <laughs> Was she one of Fagin's findings? From, from old, oldie England. 
She was known as the Witherspoon from the Witherspoon clan because they were constantly stealing cutlery from places, right? Well, well that this might feature in our story concept. So that's that's good. So we have a, a pickpocket okay. or a kleptomaniac of some kind. Um, hence, yes, going launching from the lame. Now we have to find who her co-star is. Okay, so her let's co-star. Uh, let's do the shuffle for the co-star and let's see what we got here. They got Dwayne Johnson. All right, so nice. The Rock. So okay. we got Dwayne, The Rock, Johnson, and uh, just for... Well, as we now know, he can't be the co-star. He has to be the star, and she's the co-star. I can't spell that's names. How okay, well, we're going to have a little bit of a little bit of a fight there, obviously, because... Uh, there we go. So, <laughs> all right, another advertisement. Well, I'd love to well no, because look, sure. because this is the thing, right? Reese Witherspoon has been moving into a lot of drama recently. Dwayne Johnson does not do that, because that's not his thing. Mm-hmm. So the, the addition of Dwayne Johnson means it's now, it has to be an action. There are certain, I feel like there have to be certain stars who override your genre. Or you get a bonus for picking their genre. Well, that's the question. Or, what are the genre? Well, that, speaking of which, let's see what okay. genre we end up with. Because okay. it, that it could. It needs to be action comedy, otherwise we're screwed. Yeah. It's going to be a melodrama or something, isn't it? It's action. All right. There you go. All right. Great. Action, so this is so. a Dwayne Johnson movie. With co-starring Reese Witherspoon. Nice. All right. So we're we're in good territory okay. now. We're not going to have to go yeah. too far off yeah. piste. So now what yeah. we got to do is we got to go to our um, character wheel. Okay. Mm-hmm. Courtesy of uh, of. Uh, <laughs> Me. Oh, oops, great! Sorry. Yeah, that's a really good character. Let's shrink this because I think we've made that a little bit too big in here. But there we go. Right. Let's see. Um, there. That's nice. We can make it a little bit bigger there. Okay, so we have action, which is over here on this corner. You can't see my mouse, but it's in the upper right of the pot. Well, we can't do that either. Mm-hmm. All right, so we have it's to... It's from 1 o'clock to about 4, okay. 3, 15, 3, 15. So that means that we have also a choice of um, what is our uh, sub-genre. So here, let's see if I want to I want to move this around here, but I can't do that. Well, sorry about that. Um, it's not behaving very well. We have... Animation, disaster, war, and sci-fi. So we have to sort of think about those. I'm just going to make a note. Mm. Animation. I'm going to cross off animation. That's not very interesting for today. So no. disaster. Also, just I didn't understand that for action. That's not quite right. Well, yeah, it, we had to stick it somewhere, I guess, and that's what happened. Mm. So we made a few concessions to shove everything into the pie. All right, so we're thinking about disaster, war, and sci-fi, perhaps, or just a straightforward action. Now we have the character archetypes here. It says that we can use um, a bounder. Uh, we can use investigator, and we can use sidekick. Uh, and what else we got here? Uh, we have idealist as well. Idealist. So we got quite a few choices. Um, so is that everybody? Bounder, sidekick, investigator, idealist. Yes. Mm-hmm. So those are the. Character, our character archetypes that we can consider. I'm moving quickly because I've got the we're on the clock and it's it's ridiculous. We only have 20 seconds left. Um, so let's see. So just to kind of cover some of these things, um, you know what? I'm going to let the clock run out because we're doing this for the benefit of other people as well. So let's see. Sidekick. I think we all kind of know what this is. This is the sidekick wants to be respected and appreciated by the object of their affection, which could be romantic or platonic but they can become very prickly if they're denied, which makes them Mm. vulnerable to manipulation. So in thrillers, that's always very useful, but in action, that works too. Mm. So that's the the sidekick, and there's lots of other kind of character wants and needs and stuff, which we can come to in a minute. Then we have Mm. the investigator, which uh, is tenacious to a flaw, often ignoring their own personal needs and the needs of others in pursuit of completion making them susceptible to an emotional or mental breakdown. Um, The idealist puts their cause before relationships, making them inflexible and unlikely to accept their own shortcomings, especially when it interferes with their vision. So I think we can imagine that character. Bounder, well, the bounder is the ultimate hedonist, sort of in perpetual search of personal gratification uh, which makes them fickle companions, and but leads to great adventure. So that's a quick overlook at the archetypes. And what do we think? I mean, we've got Witherspoon, Dwayne Johnson. We know sort of what he's 
he's often sort of the bounder or the side mm-hmm. side. Well, you say he's a, he's a star. He is a star, but he was a sidekick uh, mm-hmm. you know, in the past. He could play a kind of funny idealist in a way because, uh, you know, those obsessional types. Witherspoon, mm-hmm. let's see, she's an well, investigator is a role that I think she's <laughs> been in many times. Uh, do we play against type here and make her the bounder, perhaps? Um, mm. That would see. be interesting. If she's the sort of hedonist, I just want to go in search of adventure, and he's the mm-hmm. the more cautious one. That would be kind of an interesting playing against that type. That is a much it? more interesting way of playing it, yeah. Mm. Let's see. So what, let's see, if we're in an action where he's, so if she's the, maybe he's the investigation investigation type. Um, she's the bounder and, and he's trying to keep things on track. But as the, as the, as the star being the bounder, let's see, I mean, what kind of, I, I, we don't have any sort of m- motifs or themes or things to work with just yet, but, um, Let's nail something I mean, down. Could, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I mean, he could easily be the straight man to her. Yeah. Well, what's the most straight so. straight manny? Should it be sidekick? Um, let's see. I think investigator, because you still want him to be driving a story, right? So mm-hmm. there's a thing he's trying to do, and she's the one who's trying to shake things up. Okay. And All right. uh, it's it keeps messing with his investigation, but in fact, it, it's it's turning up leads because she's riling folks okay so he's the investigator and she is going to be the bounder we think because that would make it kind of different Mm -hmm. she'd be playing against type um bounder okay so let us um do for a moment reveal uh the tabletop so that we can see what we're doing um all right, so that's where we stand. Now we're going to go to the next uh, part of this game, and I'm just going to read it rather than put it on the screen for a second. So we're going to have 10 minutes to work out sort of what happens. So in this jam session, uh, we draw the cause, set piece, and promotion cards, and we work with those to figure out sort of what happens. We're going to try to find some narrative, connect the dots here. Mm-hmm. So. So here goes nothing. All right, so what's our cause? What's our cause? What is our cause going to be? It's going to be um, helping hands monkey helpers. Okay, that is an actual cause. These are um, simians that are trained to help um, handicapped individuals. So helping hands monkey helpers. Uh, Set piece is... Uh, giant oil blob. Okay, sounds like it's going to be an environmental thing with the giant oil blob. And then our product placement is going to be women's Viagra. Oh, God. Yikes. Okay, so, well, the Helping Hands Monkey Helpers suggest to me that maybe one of them is... uh, in a wheelchair or something. So that could be Dwayne Johnson, perhaps. It's kind of hard to be a bounder if, uh, well, look, I, no, I guess I, I know. Yeah, actually, right. I would know. You're right. You're right. I have to not I think make those I think it's the opposite. It's her and her funny monkey. I see. Cause she has this causing, lust for life because of the circumstances that she, she had some, she, hijinks. she had an accident of some kind is paraplegic has yep. the helping hands monkey and and um, she wants to see the world and go on great adventures, right? She just she, at this point in her life, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, and or he, she's 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 after the people who caused the accident that she had, mm-hmm. and he's also investigating the same people. Okay, so para see, so she was a paralegal, and now she's a paraplegic. She's a paraplegic paralegal. <laughs> And that's getting that's getting close to previous roles, but let's see that that's at least this is uh, for a good cause. So um, she's a paraplegic paralegal. Um, she uh, it, she could be. Well, he's an investigator, so it's he somehow they maybe he comes to her and says your accident was not an accident, uh, something like that. Well, he could just come and dismiss her thing, and then she 
tenaciously works on him until he agrees to investigate. Okay. This seems like we have a, this, this feels like an environmental disaster, which makes me think that maybe it's a disaster movie, disaster action movie, um, where we have uh, this sort of oil blob coming. It sounds like... One okay, of those, well, let's yeah. go with, um, well, let's go with company doing unregulated fracking mm. uh, yep. and causing tremors. And she was injured in one of the tremors. Her car went off the freeway or something similar. And they claimed there was no connection. And in going and investigating at this mine where they get caught up in this big oil blob release, um, they dis- they discovered that it's actually far more under the city than anyone had expected. All right, the mindset's very good because it keeps our cost down a little bit because we just have to do we oh, can do that okay. in the stages, right? We don't have to go yeah. on location or anything, yeah. so we can. And of course, as anyone knows, uh, you mine for women's Viagra. That's that's where it's found. It's found in deposits <laughs> beneath the earth. Deposits of women's Viagra. No, no, that's not that's not it. But. Okay, I was I was thinking of maybe women maybe women's Viagra is sort of like her secret uh, her secret weapon. Somehow it sort of um, you know brings her to the next level when she's well, when she needs an extra okay. rocket boost. Oh, I um, see. No, I think use it as it is because she's you know she she needs it because she's so. Because you, what you want to do when, when you're selling this to Reese, you're saying, look, it's you in a wheelchair. You're either going to get lots of wheelchair people and pickets outside your movies or you're going to get an Oscar. That's how it works. Yeah. Okay. And if, you, if we play it right, you're doing that. And so with her, it's this loathing of how, how her body means that the only way she could feasibly have sex is to take women's Viagra. And in fact, because Dwayne falls in love with her, she no longer needs it. Hmm. I but see. it helped so, her immensely. So she thought there was a dependency. See, that's not well. They're like the company that makes this is going to say, "Oh, we don't like this." No, no, not a dependency. Dependent it's what helped her through. It's the point you don't need to take women's swagger forever, but everyone may need it to give them that extra bit of self confidence. So this was a helping hand, which is the helping hands. Maybe yeah, or she just has sex with her monkey. I don't know. That's that works too. Well, that's going to be hard for the Oscar. I think. I think oh, that, do, you think, do you think that there's a line being crossed? I think there? there's a line being crossed. We're going to have to keep the the monkey as a platonic relationship. But um, oh, okay, fair enough. I mean, because those helping hands. When you when you say that's helping hands and she has sexual dysfunction, I think yeah. I think we get into hot yeah. hot water territory there. So this monkey doesn't Dude. doesn't help oh, in that boy. way. A um, lot of women are going to want a monkey. Yeah, the, the pet monkey. So, he has a lot of skills. You might want to suggest yeah. that the women's Viagra company spreads out into monkeys. Or somehow, well, let's see. How are these somehow, could these be related somehow? Um, not in but the way that But it's possible that, for example, uh, she could plop her tablets into one of the executive's drinks or something, causing them to freak out or act weird or do something. Um if we want to involve the drugs themselves well, in a story. Yeah. The, you know what? It could just be for a, for a particular scene. It could be that Dwayne, the Johnson carriage is really serious. He never gets on particularly well mm-hmm. with the females because he's such a serious, but he looks great. So, so obviously there's yeah. all these women who are quite attracted to him, but he's just like, you know, I've got to, I've got to resolve this case. He's very focused. He's very nerdy. Yeah. And, and yeah. there's a moment where she thinks, we could really make a breakthrough if 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 something happens. If there's some frisson romantically with this other nerdy uh, character that 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 needs to get some you know, for some legal reason or whatever. And so she slips it and mm-hmm. and it and it results in them getting. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know the, about the, the, the case or something. someone. So yeah, so yeah, so, but, so you're right. It's about it's kind of like roofing, isn't it? That's not very mm-hmm. good. Well, maybe it's a knowing. It's a knowing thing. It's sort of like um, okay. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Sure, I, I, like I, I thought it, or, or or no, it's an accident. It's an accident. He he thinks that he's taking um, something for a headache, and he takes women's Viagra, and it has a it has a very interesting result. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So he, it's a misdiag. It's a yeah. It's a misuse, but in a funny way. Yep. So this is the this is the comedy, yeah. the moment of levity, because we have a giant oil blob forming below the surface of the Earth. That is going to cause California to break off and slide away into the ocean. You know, the tectonic plates are going to get a little too, uh, too um, flexible. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to, or it's going to erupt in a major city. You know, those like the sinkholes that you see. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. This is going to be like the sinkhole on steroids because it's going to sink, and then all this oil is going to splutter out, 
and it's going right. to be like Katrina or you know, uh, or, or any of those sort of disaster flood hurricanes where, right. you know, well, if it's going to be a disaster movie, then it would be sinkhole. Hmm. And if it's a comedy action investigation, then it's called frack me. Right. Okay. So sinkhole or frack me, these are the titles we're getting, we're getting some, yeah. So sinkhole or frack me. <laughs> I think sinkhole has to have an exclamation mark after it, doesn't it? I think that's legal. <laughs> sinkhole <laughs> or yeah and then someone has to say something about having that sinking feeling when they hear the bad nice. news um nice. they took everything but the kitchen sink yeah, i don't know the, the puns we'll, we'll we'll come up we'll work on the title mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. later but we do have helping hands as well um okay remember those well, monkeys? She, as i said she has the monkey she's got this monkey who will do like breaking and entering stuff for her as well and that's right so you're right she has has a lot of capabilities mm -hmm. um because of this 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 in fact the monkey might sort of outshine johnson we got to be careful there this monkey doesn't get to yeah. upstage him because then we have Jeez. you know um it'll be bad he says i could be your monkey and that doesn't you know that doesn't work <laughs> Um, there's, I don't know if you've ever heard, if there anybody who ever watches uh, Japanese dramas, there's um, uh, Kimi wa Petto, which is translated as Be My Pet, uh, where this uh, young man agrees to be this woman's dog so she can live, he can live in her apartment. So I don't know if there's a, yeah. there's a weird possibility there, but I'll put that to one side. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so let's see, how are we doing for time? We got a minute left. Okay, so, um, oh, product placement. Oh, we did that. We did that. We got yeah, the Viagra. So we're yeah, actually we're actually ahead of the game. So we can work a little bit more on the narrative here. So so we have... In a minute? Yeah, we have the the, <laughs> okay. the mindset, the fracking. I like this. So who is our, who is our antagonist then? It's the, um, whoever's the head of the fracking company, the evil fracking company. Well, the co-star, I mean, he could be, he could, Dwayne could be our, 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 our charismatic but evil fracker. Um, if we yeah. wanted to, yeah, we kind of like the buddy, the buddy feeling, right? Yeah. No, we like the buddy feeling of it. I think mm. it's, you probably want a British actor. They're let's, always let's, good let's, villains. Let's, let's actually see who our villain is. Let's, let's, let's pull okay. out, pull out of that hat while we've got this extra time. I'm feeling so, feeling so good about it. Okay. Our villain is Johnny Depp. Okay. Excellent. There you go. Perfect. So Johnny Depp is our fracking. Yeah, you're right. He is, he is actually pretty perfect. He could do a really dark, yeah. you know, he could sell. This is like, um, you know, the gecko moment of greed is good. So yes. he's going to have to come up. We have to have that moment where the Depp fracker is basically saying, you know, the dividends are too good to say no to. You know, screw the environment and who cares if it mm -hmm. destroys these towns and cities and whatnot. Or, or up from the ashes grow the roses of success. So this there is going to yep. be, you know, the f Project Project Phoenix. Um, you know, we're going to destroy the environment on purpose because, mm -hmm. you know, good things come to, to from the rebirth. So I do it out of love. You know, I destroy yep. cities and economies out of love for you because just like, just like we have now uh, in, in many uh, democracies around the world, you know, with these sort of authoritarian characters coming in, it's like we're going to just destroy everything so that you realize how important it was and you rebuild mm -hmm. it with renewed vim and vigor. Okay. So now let's see. Um, we're going to get into, okay, this is going to get us into a lot of uh, deep. This is where we get deep deep conversation. We got 10 minutes. Thank God for this. Um, this one is where we go, what's my character? So we got to work for, mainly for Witherspoon, but we're going to have to think about Johnson as well a little bit to sort of help her understand uh, what her character is all about. So we're going to take a premise and we're going to use this premise to figure out sort of what our main character, which is her, what a Witherspoon character, by the way, should we give her a name so we don't have to refer to her as Witherspoon all the time? Um, no. Well, think of something. No, because it helps focus it if she's if it's right. Reese. Okay, it's Reese. So, so Reese, um, we're going to draw a premise, and we're going to sort of use the premise to perhaps guide us as to what Reese's uh, wants, needs, and flaws and stuff are. And if this causes us to rework the narrative a little bit, so be it. So, I'm going to go to our. She is the bounder. So I'm going to go to the the bounder. Uh,
I'm going to go to the bounder for a moment, and we're going to look at some of the characteristics and see uh, what we think. I'm also going to pull out a premise for her, so here we go. That one just popped out. It really wanted me to choose it. So blind trust leads to destruction. Okay, so that's interesting. Blind trust leads to destruction. We've seen that many times. Um, with avid followers of political figures who, who basically vote against their own interests or end up destroying their own lives because they trust uh, in the authority so much. Okay, so this bounder um, makes them a fickle companion because they really want experiential adventure and that type of thing. They want, let's see, stimulation, exploration, and novelty. What they need is stability and companionship, and they fear stasis, boredom, or predictability. So that's kind of a little snapshot of their wants and needs. So we can work on that with, with the Theresa's character, but we can already see she's somebody that is constricted in her movement. She doesn't want that to change her, her life. She's already got the helping hands monkey helper to enable her to do all kinds of things that, that were heretofore seen as uh, not possible. And she's, she's looking for, you know, adventure and this and that, but is perhaps in a way lonely because the stimulation in itself is not going to fill the need for a companion, like somebody that's going to join her on her journey because doing all these things by herself or even with people that you just sort of meet in the moment isn't as, as satisfying for this character as really having someone be by their side or backing them up or looking after them. So we know that Dwayne Johnson has to fulfill that role. Johnson has to fulfill that role in some way, but she's out there looking for these things. Now, in terms of virtues and vice, we say that the virtues tends to be temperance. That's an interesting one. I can't remember why we decided that, but gluttony was a vice. That, 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 yes, I could see because they're so hedonistic going around, you know, trying to, mm -hmm. to soak up everything they can. And then in terms of flaws, we have that they can be very restless and aloof uh, because they're never satisfied where they are. So, so how, in this sort of scenario that we're building, what is it? It sounds to me almost like something has happened to her to cause this incident that has resulted in her life being turned upside down. She has made lemonade out of lemons and said, you know what, before this happened, I was just a paralegal buried in the books and I didn't stick my head above the parapet and look at life. And now I'm just mm -hmm. gonna, I'm just gonna live life and love life, and that's what I want to do. Somehow, D Johnson needs her to, to reconcile this this fracking um, evil empire thing, and uh, she is reluctant. Unless, or or she she does it on the lark in the beginning, but when it starts to get serious, it's like oh, let's move on to something else. This is. I don't know. What do you think? What's what's happening here in this character? I mean, to me, it's more uh, it's, uh, what I'm taking it for him instead of personal gratification is that she is a character who is going to, whereas the investigator, it seems to me, will follow rules or regulations to get where they need to go. A bounder is about breaking those. Mm -hmm. Okay. If we put it into a buddy cop or buddy anything type of film and it feels to me like she's the one who's willing to 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 cut those corners to kick down the doors because she's got nothing to lose she feels mm -hmm. and um that is going to drag our investigator into deeper and deeper water I but she takes him further than he'd ever would go Right. Yes, and 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 I suppose you could say in terms of greedy, it's greed for fulfilling their personal needs. So they will therefore uh, do whatever it takes to get that. I I can see how I would see it. I also see the situation maybe, and my my trouble when I think about these things, I'm often kind of going to the side, the plot B or the sub story or the mm -hmm. other character. But the Johnson character, I can kind of see this person being, you know, they, they've been after this antagonist mm -hmm. for a while, you know, and they're using legal proper methods and all that. And it's arduous and agonizing and they keep losing cases because this person doesn't play by the rules. This antagonist charms, sweet talks, pays off bribes, does all these things 
so that the law never sticks. And right. on, and this, you know, the the Johnson character is like, you know, I, I'm going to get this person if I'm just double down on my tenacity. I just, you know, I'm going to get him. And it's really important for him to get him by the law. He doesn't want to be an outlaw or this sort of thing for whatever reason. It's really important that he does it by the book. Now, for some reason, he ends up with her and she is a rule breaker and mm -hmm. has to admit I mean, he has to admit, I guess, that she does actually get results because she doesn't play by the rules either. But it's ultimately not what he, how he wants to reel in his big fish. He doesn't yes. want to cheat. Um, and she has to uh, kind of come to, to recognize that, um, I think. But that's counter to blind trust leading to destruction, the idea of which being if you followed those, the correct legal ways of doing something, it's not going to work. Well, for, we for okay, I see. For him, you're saying that he, he could, this could be a lesson for him that, yes, that, that in fact, you do need to break out to get these things done. So that at some point, justice will fail you when confronted with someone as powerful and as tick like plant, implanted within society as Johnny Depp is. Yeah, that's very interesting. So this is for so for the Johnson character, he is being tormented by the Now remember, the premise we could confirm or or deny. So this is his mm -hmm. this yeah, that makes sense. Right. That's his journey. He's he's basically saying I'm going to do this by the letter of the law, but it keeps he keeps getting outplayed, now maneuvered because yes. the other person does not the other person uses the law and games the system. Right, so it's it's use the system versus game the system. Okay. So sorry, that's that's really badly written, but that's what that means: using the system versus game the system. For her, mm -hmm. what is the lesson? The blind trust leads to destruction. Um. I mean, is she already? <laughs> oh, oh, there's the cat. It's feeding time again. No, I like there you like go. was her. Was her accident because she she f trusted in something that didn't work out, and now she's just like, I don't trust anything or anybody. Um, I'm this is the ultimate bounder, you know. <laughs> mm. um, in other mm. words, that would explain why she doesn't have companionship or stability because her attitude is, I don't, I don't trust it. I've been there, yep. I've done that, and it did me wrong. So, um, yep. so uh, her attitude could be, I don't trust. I don't trust the system. All right, so there's there's a nice conflict between them already there, right? That mm -hmm. that that he's a product of the system and she's not. I mean, they're both in the legal profession, perhaps. He could be a journalist or something, but she could say, look, I, he could be like, I want to do this by the letter of the law. And she could say, look, I work for the law and I can tell you, you know, it, it, is, it isn't what it's cracked up mm -hmm. to be, right? It's all these mm -hmm. people... It, the law, the law is the law is for suckers. <laughs> the law yeah. is for those, you know, who follow it, who are suckers, versus the ones who manipulate it and use and use yeah. the suckers. So, uh, law is for suckers. That's her her attitude. But they have a shared interest, I guess, which is to see the downfall of this character because mm -hmm. he has been responsible for her injury. Uh, uh, although, what would be interesting is that in the end. She may say that his just desserts don't have to be an eye for an eye, as it were, because she can say, you know what, from this experience, I've grown as a person and my life is actually better. So I can't, mm -hmm. I can't hold everything against him. In other words, you know, he does, Depp does what Depp does, <laughs> good and bad. I, you know, it resulted in something bad happening to me, but I have overcome it and actually it has led to um, right. a really fulfilling life and, and all these experiences. So I can't, I can't say I want to see the absolute total destruction of this uh, character. And so maybe that reigns in the Johnson character a little bit because it's like, look, he's done some bad things. He has to mm -hmm. have the consequences, but they don't have to be as dire as maybe he wants them to be because of all this pent up frustration. All right. So that is, um, that was a little bit to do with our, uh, character. I hope we, we got the characters developed a little bit more. 
So now we have to put everything in five minutes into an elevator pitch. All right. So just a quick pitch. Oh, hang on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah, yeah. For the logo, just do sinkhole with the I being an inverse, being an inverse I. So it's an exclamation mark. And then you've got the exclamation mark at the end. So it's um, actually it could so be it's an upside down I. It could be sink. I. So I mean, this is a kind of a bad drawing, but it could just be sink, and it's a hole. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's supposed to be an exclamation point. Okay, that's looking worse. I see. I see. Yeah, I see. Okay, yeah, no, sink. Uh, what? 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 And people. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes when we think about titles too long, they get worse. So that we get, I think you're right. You probably should go with that sinkhole. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Leave it there. All right. Um, so five minutes. We're going to basically pull, uh, pull this thing together, and uh, we're going to come up with a, a couple sentences to describe this. So we're going to pitch this to because because Gonsamacher is almost at the restaurant. And so, what what is it going to be? So Reese, with so so Reese is a Reese is a uh, fun former paralegal. Is a well, let's let's say that she's a uh, uh, is a former okay former paralegal who became paralegic parale, para, para, oh, I can't spare paraplegic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it should be. Uh, Reese is a former uh, paralegal who comes to believe her para paraplegic injury was caused by secret fracking by Johnny Depp. I'm just trying to come up with the, the story. Mm -hmm. um, she's partnered with Dwayne The Rock Johnson a nerdy investigator for the, what is it in the States? It's the environmental the EPA. Okay. He's, a, he's a nerdy EPA investigator. <laughs> and also, you know, he's, we're going we're gonna to have some fun with the wigs. We've got to give him like a strange right. punch perm yeah. or something. Yeah, Johnson yeah. is so a nerdy. Could be, she's could be reluctantly partnered EPA with. Investigator. Um, and the two of them discover um, a threat to the entire city. I mean, I'm just, I'm being rubbish, but I'm trying to get yeah. us to the end of the sentence. Uncover yeah. a subterranean threat to the entire city. A subterranean threat to entire city. And then we can, you know, get into this threat, which is a, a giant oil blob. A, let's say, let's, let's make it more than giant. Let's just say it's a, it is, um, a uh, hundred kilometers square, a uh, hundred mile, a hundred mile oil blob below the surface of of L.A. or something. Yep. Of Los Angeles. Oh, it's like the uh, La Brea tar pits just opening oh, up. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, it's gonna. It's the it's the tar pits, the tar pits. So so Depp has been fracking and dumping in the tar pits. There you go. Yeah. So. Um, and, and, and then you're going to get to see what happens when tar runs loose, man. Depp has, Depp has been dumping uh, into La Brea. How deep will Depp go? <laughs> um, so now, getting back to, so that's the sort of the quick kind of, I love, oh, we got to tell her about the, uh, we forgot to mention her monkey. Uh, Reese is a former paplegic who bleeds and a paplegic who calls for rock injury. Um, and adopted, well, somehow we're going to say that her monkey, maybe we can get into the next bit and say that, you know, how they win the day. Uh, our heroes um, thwart, let's say Depp, Depp must, I mean, either this oil thing is, okay, I know. If we're going to have a redemption of some kind, Depp is dirty, but he doesn't want to like destroy the whole city. The oil blob is actually just the result of all his, bad behavior it's like a boil um the the blob is a a boil of bad behavior um that that is the consequence and now 
these two can actually help Depp solve the problem. So it's one of these sort of kind of redemption things. And then she says to the, at the end, you know, yes, he should do some jail time or he should be fined heavily or whatever, but he doesn't have to destroy his life because actually, you know, uh, we can all learn from circumstances, right? So, um, blob is a boil about behavior. Uh, so our heroes use, um, their, their, uh, knowledge and, and monkey to save, <laughs> to save, uh, the city. Um, and then we have the women's Viagra. Maybe, maybe Depp is given the women's Viagra. This is leading to a comedy. Um, okay. But uh, in, a, in, a, in a moment, let's say this is, he's, he's brought on side. Depp is brought on side through um, the Viagra incident. We'll just call it the Viagra incident. A women's Viagra incident. Yeah, I like the fact that she kind of keeps this with her. And uh, and then sort of uses it mischievously on, on the antagonist. I mean, then we can use it in the way it isn't meant to be. We can roofie mm -hmm. the antagonist because he's ruthless. Sure. You. So yeah. we can roofie the ruthless antagonist. Okay, great. So I would I'm going to have to type that up into something that looks a little <laughs> more acceptable than okay. all this kind of crazy uh, text. But that's good. So. It's fun. That That's was really the, fun. that was our Gonsamacher agency. We're we're good at creating, um, you know, sort of fly by the seat of our pants. Um, sure are. Uh, schlock action adventure, <laughs> but with a little bit of there's, time, there's... we could we could develop a little richer outcome. So I think mm -hmm. uh, that's just a first yeah. blush, as it were. Um, yeah. No, there's no elevator we can't empty in L.A. <laughs> and uh, just because I think I feel. As if you know, not to not to make light of all these things. I I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, show us um, the helping hands monkey helpers. Um, let's see. There it is. Um, so if anybody needs a pair of helping hands, uh, let's see if we can get some audio here to help us. Hey! <laughs> oh my God, she's so cute. Well, she's a little distracting. <laughs> I, I can say just about anything right now. People would be like, look at the monkey! <laughs> exactly. Dylan's a little bit smaller than that. Our recipients have been robbed of their independence through injury. Bring them something positive. Let them set new goals. Provide them that independence, even in small ways. Good girl! So that's pretty cool, right? It's, it's very nice. So, so it, there is such a thing, and they are helping people with their capuchins. I guess the capuchins are the. All right. So, so I think we did a. I think we did a pretty good job of it. Um, we. Oh yeah. I oh, I see. This is where I was supposed to fill out our elevator pitch. Well, I'll do that later. Um, but the title we can we can say this is sinkhole. What's our dramatic question? That's a good point. We didn't uh, action. I'm going to say disaster. Um, dramatic question. Mm. That's a good, good point. The lion trust leads to destruction. Um, yeah, and our tagline. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, helping hands. Something with the, yeah, I don't want to go there. Um, oh, well, sinkhole, it's something simple. Like, how deep does it go? Mm -hmm. um, how... Because uh, what you want is ideally that if we're going with the, the tar pits, it's about people breaking free of their pasts, with the tar being the image for the thing that will consume them if they're unable to do so. Well, this is almost like can a th – these are, these are two kind of can uh, – well, these, these two people, whatever we call them, we, we would – you know, we would come mm -hmm. up with something, you know, to say these two very unlikely people uh, save mm -hmm. Los Angeles. Overcome their differences okay. to save Los Angeles. 
say Los Angeles from from a hundred mile fracking blowhole. <laughs> that just sounds sounds more. Sounds great. Yeah, sounds okay. great. You can whatever these people are overcome the differences to save Los Angeles from a hundred mile fracking blowhole. Okay, how low can you go? We can work on that. But anyway, uh, and the log line is um, what we came up with uh, in the moment, and I won't bore us now to, with all of that. But, okay. but that's pretty good. Awesome. I agree. I agree. That was great. <laughs> We're going to try some more of these and see if we can get them yes, into a do. rhythm. Um, because we, we do. actually do come up with a little elevator pitch at the end of it, which is nice. All right. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That was fantastic. <laughs>